Well, hello everybody. How are you guys doing? This is Ronit with Huddle Time with Ronit. Hope you guys are doing really good. Yeah, it is Monday and uh, Monday is supposed to be fun day. I don't know about um, Sunday because Sunday was another fun day. So here we are. Uh, I'm talking to you live again from Chicago this time. I'm not talking to you uh, from Seattle, which usually I, I do. Uh, this time I flew over here to the headquarters of American's Beauty Show. Hi, Matt. How are you? So good to see you. Um, yeah. Hi, Jen. Hi, Matt. Um, so I am here in Chicago, and if I could, I would lift the, this computer and I would show you uh, the skyline of Chicago in the background. So it's really beautiful. And it's a great day. It's really amazing. Hi, Angela. So good to see you. Come on in. It's great to see you guys all. I miss you guys all. You know, uh, we're here uh, with America's Beauty Show, Cos Cosmetology Chicago. I'm here as a guest, um, listening to the big plans that are coming up. So I can't wait to share them with you. And um, and I have a great guest here tonight. So I'm, I'm super stoked uh, today because it is Monday. What am I talking about tonight? But uh, hey. Um, so I have a great guest here today and I can't wait to share with you. So I'm going to just kind of give it another minute for everybody to chime in and just say hello. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Huddle Time with Renee. Thank you for tuning in into America's Beauty Show by Cosmetology of Chicago each Monday for a session. And um, it's a helpful session and it's a hopeful session and it's inspirational uh, session, but it's also giving you tools and tips of the greatest uh, people around. Now, they're not, you know, any different than you and I, so we're going to be working on this together. My name is Renit Enos, and I'm the host of Title Time, founder of Salon Cadence, which is a profit wealth solutions and coaching and training company. I help salon and small businesses owners reach to be the top 5% in our industry, and one day we'll talk about that and build the ideal life that they actually want for themselves. So uh, please friend me on Facebook or connect with me on IG or just go into our um, website and download um, our success guide for profit. How can you be more profitable today? What you need to do, some tips, just download it. It's great. Connect with me. We love hearing from you. So uh, I'd love to bring on live from Chicago, from ABS headquarters, my very good buddy, somebody I can always be real with, which I'm usually real with everybody, but I can always get realism back. Her name is Carrie Davis. And as a matter of fact, her Israeli name is Gila. Hey, Gila, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you for having me. Yeah. Uh, I'm so super stoked to have you here. I've been planning to have you on the show for quite some time, but I kind of like layered a little bit some things until I, I, I created a really good space and it just happened to be that this is a perfect space for you today. I'm so, so um, honored. I know we're friends, but I'm honored for you to be here because for years, for years, I've always looked at you as my mentor. Uh, running salons are not a simple task. Um, running, at, working with people and, and working with communities, you're working with so many avatars are not a simple task. And you created an amazing uh, culture and amazing salons in San Diego. Um, you're a lead educator and a developer for the um, big Aveda brand uh, in their uh, education um, De uh, department, which is amazing. So to me, watching you on stage, watching you speak is not only mentorship, but it's just a shot of oxygen because you are a living, breathing oxygen, but you're also an activist. You're a mother, you're a wife, um, you run a household. And in these days, you fight for diversity, you fight for peace, you fight for love. You fight for compassion. So I'm so excited to have you on board and welcome. 
So Thank you. God, you're making me want to cry. I hope I can live up to all of this. I'm like, <laughs> let me get my Kleenex. That was very sweet. It's an honor for me to be here, Ronit. Thank you very, very much. Appreciate oh, that. Welcome. So Gila, I know what it means uh, in Hebrew. Do you want to tell us what it means? Should you tell? Because okay. you are the native. Okay. All right. Let me do this. <laughs> well, Gila means joy, celebration. So, hava, nagila, hava, hava, nagila, hava. <laughs> but yes, gila is is um is the joy, it's a celebration, <clears throat> and you are, you know, you've always been that way. And you know, Ronit comes from the word ron, ran, which means also like bubble, like joy, joy, like but bubble, like doesn't stop, like a mercury, you know, that type of thing. So hey, can you imagine the two of us on one show? So, all right, tell us a little bit about how you started, um, how you started your career as a salon owner. Well, um, <clears throat> when I was doing hair, I'm a hairdresser, and um, I did hair, practicing doing hair for probably six years before I opened a salon and just kind of learning what it meant to be a hairdresser, what it meant to be in the community. And I was always looking for something more. And what I couldn't find as a hairdresser was a company that I felt I could be taken care of. I could have health care. I could have retirement. I could have, you know, like paid vacation. And I wanted to work in a company that offered that. And I didn't find that. So I decided to create my own. So um, one day, and this is 29 years ago, I asked my mom, um, who had nothing to do with the salon business, do you want to go into business with me? And um, she said, yes. I mean, what did either one of us know? We're like, how fun could that be? <laughs> and so that's how our career started. It started in our very first day in our very first location in San Diego in the kind of uptown Hillcrest location. We started in a thousand square feet in an upstairs studio kind of location in 1992. So that's how we started. And um, we've come a long way uh, since then. So, so what was your mother role in the business and your role So, at that time? Well, I told my mom right from the get-go, and if she's watching this, she's going to start chuckling. But I'm like, I'm the boss. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the boss now. Shut her. Um, Shut like her. She had like she had any. Yeah, she's like, uh -huh, OK, yeah. Because when have you ever not been the boss? Um, <laughs> But my mom's role was a, that of support, like she's been my whole life. I mean, she's just always been there to this day um, to support me. And my mom worked at the front desk and we had eight stations. And so, you know, I did hair and I was the manager and I was the educator. And, you know, we we did what we did for many years until then we, you know, expanded and opened another one and opened another one and took that one and moved downstairs, which was like opening a fourth one. So um, it just, it just each um, year that we grew, I felt it was, um, I never wanted to have a big company. I, I really like the intimacy of a small company, but I think in the desire to create a place where people could grow, you kind of have to keep growing to create new opportunities for growth for people. And I think that's probably what drove us to continue to grow. Mm -hmm. and, and that's really kind of your drive. That's what brought you to it. So uh, year first, year two, uh, your first salon, um, how was it? Did you really get to that nirvana on the first year and the second year of where <laughs> you're making more money, you have more time to spend with your family? Um, you know, all these dreams of giving uh, to your staff, everything you always hoped for, has it come true in the first couple of years? Well, don't take this the wrong way. Yeah. Okay. It's like when you first have your you first go. kid, your, your first kid, and you're like, what have I done? Like, I had such an easy life, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. I, I, you know, obviously you want to have a kid and you want to have a business, but you never really know the amount of work that it takes. And it was, um, it was really hard for the first few years. It was, you know, you're the cleaning company and you're the one that works seven days a week and you're the one compromising the lifestyle that you really want 
to get the work done and the foundation work done so that you can start to build on that. But when you first open, you don't even know you're doing that. You're just trying to survive. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, my mom um, tells this story that at the first night we opened, we popped champagne after like the day closed, we had our champagne and I'll never forget this. I had this dress on that I will never share a picture with, with anybody at that point in 1992. Dress, but at the end of the day, um, I looked around and we have our champagne in our hands and then everybody had left and I looked around and I was like, this place is a freaking disaster. Who, who cleans up? Like where's cleaning company? And at that point I took my dress and I tied it up between my legs and I got on my hands and knees and started just cleaning and cleaning the floors and cleaning everything. And my mom said, I'm taking a picture of this moment because I mean, you didn't even clean your room growing up. So, um, you know, you start from the, you start from the, where's the cleaning company? And you look in the mirror and say, you know, you're the everything. So, um, no, the first two years are not Nirvana. The first two years are brutal. And, uh, so. <laughs> well, so, you know, moving on to a second location, a third location, um, you have three locations. Um, you have, obviously we're going to talk about the training company that you have, uh, Beauty Backbone. And for everybody who's just joining us right now, we have Carrie Davis on our show, a good friend of mine, an inspiration and mentor for us all. Um, it's great tips we're gonna talk about. We're gonna talk about today of how to lead teams today. Why is it different? Or, or why it is not different and that's the way it should be. Uh, but how we can win this war, because we are in this war. So how can you war? And you have a second war on your hand, which is uh, you're in California. All the salons yeah. are shut down. Uh, but before we get into this, Carrie, you're in a second and a third location. What have you learned uh, not to do when you're actually going into a second on a third location that you can share with all of us? I, it's not really so much what not to do. The first thing that comes to my mind is what needs to happen prior to duplicating. And some of it you learn while you're in process. But one thing that I learned as we moved from one to two and then two to three is what one needs to have are duplicatable systems so that you can say, here are the checks and balances. Here are the systems for um, for how we do education, um, how we coach people, um, the systems for our customer care, what's in place so that we can duplicate those and not feel like we're starting from scratch. And so you can also take the culture that you've created and recreate the culture that's working for you. If you have a culture that's not working for you and you have a business that's not profitable and you should not open a second location. A second location is not going to make it easier and it's not going to make it more profitable. So you have to nail the first one and make sure that your systems are operating. Um, you know, you know what your culture is and that it's a profitable business. And then um, that's just my own humble opinion. And then you move into duplicating that for number two. And there's some things that duplicate beautifully and some things you have to alter a little bit. And once you kind of can get two locations duplicated, the third one then is like an add on. So got it. Now, for what I'm here and from what I researched and learned, um, every time you open a second one, and of course, um, we open a second location as well. So every time you open, it's almost like you're opening a new business. And when you open a second one, it's actually, even though you have the system and even know, you know the game now, it is a completely different game. It's a completely different culture. It has a completely different feel and vibe. So now, whatever you took and you put on for the second one, now, it, like you said, it has to be modified again, right? Yeah. So yeah. what is the number one thing? Or let's let's even say three most important things that when you do so, you absolutely have to have uh, that is a non-negotiable. You have to have it in order to be successful on a second location. Um, <clears throat> look, uh, this is whether you have one location or multiple locations. Uh, every business needs to have their core values and their mission statement that is their guide. It guides them in decision making. So it's not like 
I'm going to create a mission statement and throw it in my drawer because some, they told me to make a mission statement or they told me that I need to have the core values of my business. They're living, breathing <clears throat> elements to be able to guide you in decision making. Yeah. And so I think that is something you have to have. And I think that um, one thing I've become much more easygoing as time has gone on than when I had one location, you know, and I had my finger on the trigger on every little thing. You have to lighten up a little bit um, when you start multiplying. Yeah. Yeah. And like you said, you know, each business changes a little bit. Now, the systems and the core values stay the same, how we make decisions and what changes is the personality of the business, right? Based on the demographics that you're in. I mean, we have, uh, our first location is in Gaytown, USA, right? We're in the middle of Hillcrest, it's urban, there's restaurants and bars and clubs. And then it's it's like, look, the vibe is just like, it's super vibrant and a little edgy. And our second location is, seven minutes from the border of Mexico. It's suburban, it's Otay Ranch, Chula Vista. Um, It's it's very family oriented, a lot of Spanish speakers, very, very different. So when I walk in, sometimes everyone's speaking Spanish and I'm just smiling and hoping people are having a good time. (laughs) And then our third location is different again. It's in a totally different area of San Diego. That's a different suburbia with a different energy. And those stylists in your team kind of take on that energy, right? So the personality of all the kids are different, but what drives you and the core values and your morals are the same. I, and I totally with you, you know, on, on our call today, we have Matt and Jen Martinelli from Canvas Me. And so I'm super excited for mm. everybody to chime in, um, you know, Canvas Me, because we had this conversation last time about the core values, but how core values where, you know, it's not a textbook, right, Carrie? It's not a textbook where where you go, you have a staff meeting and you say, hey, guys, we're going to identify our core value honesty, uh, accountability, loyalty, blah, blah, blah. No, you got to dig deep inside and say, for the owner, for the, for, for, for the founder, for the CEO of the company, what is important to you? Yes. What is important to you as, as, as the very first visionary of your company? You really have to dig deep inside. And I love this conversation with you because I think you have built your company based on yeah. what you truly believe from the beginning all the way to now and it shows up in your um support in in, in the impact that you have in this world so and i bet if you looked around you um you would see that most of your staff you know share the same value there you didn't have to convince them and the one that didn't trickled out trickled out and it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Right? So your second location, now your third location. Is the third location is completely a different ball game than the first or the second? Is it easier? Um, there are elements that are easier because the systems that work for two will work for three. Um, so there are definitely elements. Uh, but <clears throat> it's like... Um, bringing a third child in, you only have two hands and then one kid's always going to be running in the middle of the street and you just hope they don't get run over. So, you know, every time you continue to um, duplicate or add another, um, you're stretching yourself a little bit more. So I think the support kind of like what you were referring to um, a minute ago is super important that you surround yourself with people that are aligned, that are like-minded and that are in the game with you. So I, that that really um, dictates your experience as you start to multiply. Mm-hmm. And I love that multiplication idea. So, um, okay, so we're three, we're three in. We're uh, three in. We're three in, we're way in, and we're building our next coach, uh, next fun entrepreneurial um, adventure which yeah. is we're moving and we're pivoting into training and coaching. Yeah. And you do it with two partners of yours. Yeah. Tell me, tell me a little bit about Beauty Backbone. And I love that name. How did that even come up? So seriously, how, what, what was the Beauty Backbone? Well, 
you had mentioned in our intro that I have worked with Aveda for about 15 years and I have helped to co-write their Aveda Business College curriculum and I travel all over, not now, um, but in my other life, um, I travel all over the country a couple times a month um, teaching business um, systems, business strategy, profitability. Um, and so, <clears throat> I didn't, I didn't really have a desire, just like I didn't never even had a desire to open my own salon when I started doing hair. I didn't have any desire to open another company. But what I found as I was traveling is that I get so many people messaging me after I would do a program. Can you send me this? Can you send me that? And then I would just forward those messages to my business partner, Carla, who's been my business partner for years and we've worked together for years. So I'd forward her and the managers at the location, can you guys get this, send this to me, get that? I mean, every other day I was, you know, half of their work was getting information out to people. And Carla, finally, who grounds me, she's very, very yeah, structured. Yeah. She's like, her. look, you, yeah, Carla, I I'm a little her. bit, I'm up here, you know, and Carla's <laughs> like, whoa, okay, let's just bring it down. Okay. Okay. Come down, girl. Feet on the ground, girl. Feet on the ground. <laughs> so Carla said to me, look, I mean, we need to have a place where owners can come to and get these things that are the things that they keep asking for because it is disruptive <laughs> to that every day, you know, everyone's trying to get their work done. And here comes, the, you know, a whole litany list of things that everybody needs that they're gathering every day. Let's make it and um, make a, a website, a, a company where owners can come where we're providing the education that they need. So that was like, that was the idea for a very long time and, and the ask, and we, we didn't do it um, for, a, for a long time. And then um, we have a very, very um, high-end education program in our company, and it is very structured. And um, it is, um, it takes uh, somebody right out of school and it can, it, takes them through a path of whatever criteria they need to get out on the floor. And on top of that, because we need educators to execute that, especially with three locations, we created a train the trainer program so that we have educators and then in the salon. And if one educator happened to leave, um, then we can get another educator up and trained within six weeks of um, how to go through the educator handbook, the student handbook, the criteria and everything like that. So we created all of this for Gila Root and I was sharing it, I was bragging because John, who's our ed lead education director, wrote the curriculum. And I was of course bragging to a few of my friends that like, oh my God, look, we have like brought this program to the next. And so then they said, can John come out and um, teach us how to do that? And I, so I started having all these requests for how to create a train the trainer program. And um, so I said, okay, here, this is again, it's bigger than us. I just can't be shipping John off because John is working for Gila Root. So we created um, our very first program with Beauty Backbone called our Train You. So it's training um, any stylist how to be a dynamic educator. And it's an online course, so we don't have to go anywhere to do it. And from there, we said, what's the overarching thing we need to do here? Because there's been you know, the ask about business practices, the ask about education. So we developed um, a company that really encompasses all of it, um, which is Beauty Backbone. And so Car that, that's Carla's um, brainchild is that name, Beauty Backbone, as we were going through what to name a company. And right when it came about, it was like, that's it. So we landed there and really Beauty Backbone helps to support owners um, to be more profitable, sustainable, stronger systems and create an education program in their company. Which I think right now is so incredible necessary, um, you know, and we're not going to touch the leadership part yet, uh, but I think that um, it's important. Um, I, and I hear that a lot because what we have right now is we have small capacity of hours. So we think that we need to work those hours. We think we need to take as many clients as we can. But no matter what, you still need to support. You still need to have education. And education comes technically. Um, it comes with, um, um, you know, culture-wise, and it comes with uh, business-wise. So, oh, yeah. uh, and, and we attend to always put that last when we're so busy 
thinking we need more money. We're thinking we need more, more and to sell another hour. I had a conversation today with one of our Salon Cadence members and, uh, and, I, and I was asking, you know, um, our member and I asked, so you hired, right now you hired two apprentices and, but in reality, you need to sell two more, 200 more. And so the priority is either to find somebody that is more adverse or to find some, or, or to invest in, um, in, in two more, in more learning and more education yeah. and with the young ones. Where do you draw this line? I mean, because you have to have both, yes, mm -hmm. but right now things are different. Things are really different. However, we all need the education. So um, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I, you know, I was just, what I was just initially and immediately, you know, thinking of is, Right now, and you know, I know, you know, we both do very similar work, Ronit. You have a, you know, group and a body of, of clients, which are salon owners, as I do, that I've, you know, been working with for years. And right now, what we're hearing a lot of is staff retention issues, right? People like, you know, when we were closed, how many people are going to come back? I've lost this amount of team members. How am I going to build my business back? And the hardest thing to think of in the middle of thinking you're in a crisis is pivoting, even though you're, you're because we get so caught up in the crisis we're in, we yeah. can't look at it objectively, right? So objectively, if someone were to look down on this issue that wasn't their issue, because we can give advice way better than we can give ourselves advice, right? right? Yeah. We look down on this issue and we say what's needed here and what's needed. And I talked about this in our group this morning that we have our beauty backbone group is if we're not continuing to build people, even when you think the time isn't right, then you can't replace people that leave. And if you can't replace people that leave, okay, it's not that the person leaves, it's the customers that leave. So yes, it could be the it's the person. I, I don't like when people leave unless I want them to leave, <laughs> which also happens. So which, which is okay. Which is which okay. is okay. Yes, it's you know it's it's is it a coach them in or coach them out? That's my motto, right? So, um, if as somebody leaves, which people are gonna leave, and as owners of businesses, we have to have the expectation that people are always gonna be leaving. Because yeah. we're not like nobody put a ring on my finger and said forever. And so they said, I'm going to come here for right now, right? This is my career for now. Yeah. So we have to be preparing all the time to elevate people, to train people. So the minute not only somebody leaves, but just to, the, to me, the bigger the, the net, the more fish you catch. The yeah. more people I have out on the floor, the more clients come in. And if somebody leaves, I have to have somebody at that same level to take their place because again, they could leave, but I could keep the clients, but I have to be able to replace that level of service. And so some, and if the education program is where you're building from the ground up, someone from out of school, it's going to take a couple of years. Okay. That needs to happen in sync with hiring people that maybe have been in the business for a while right now, and but they have to be open to your culture. And so their training may be more cultural yes, with a little bit of technical where the new people, they just drink the Kool-Aid of the culture and they're just soaking up the technical. So yeah. there's really two different elements here, but if they're not both working all the time, we have right now since COVID hit, more people in getting our education program on how to train trainers yes. than when we first launched the program. And so I think that that's very telling because we, if we're not constantly training people, um, then we, and, and, and you know, and I know, when we have a walkout, when we have people leave, our numbers are affected. Yeah, and it takes two years. To build back, if you have a lot of people leave, it takes over two years to get back to where you were prior to those that group or those few yeah. or whatever. And, and you just touched base on the most important thing. And I'm just going to stop here for one second because I okay. want to acknowledge that Angela from Salon uh, Today is on our call. And hi, Angela. We miss you and we love you. And we're so excited that there's going to be Salon 
today 200 again. So for anybody, yes. so anybody who does not know about 200 uh, best salon in, um, in the country, find out, go to salontoday.com and find out what it is because it's exciting and we should all sign up for it because we can do this together, all of us, right? Um, I can't so, wait to see how this is going to roll out too with the top 200 because I I'm always in there with my applications, and I think this is going to be a really different year, and I think it's just going to be fascinating to see. Yeah. And I know Angela, I read I was reading about the top 200 that it's going to be a little bit different this year. So I'm super excited to kind of get my hands yeah. my mitts in there and um, and see where we land this year with it. Yeah, and I think this year they're a bit little more open. They're a little bit more lineal. They have a little bit more time in our hands right now. Uh, so anybody should apply because it's amazing. Um, you know, it, it's such a great fulfillment uh, when you when you do write the essays of how amazing you actually did as an owner, as a boss. Um, so you talked about time, Carrie. Um, you talked about time. Time is something we cannot buy. No. Yes, there's two elements, time and money and talent, and three elements, right? So time is, is, is important. Do you want to invest two years in somebody and then that somebody is not, you know, um, panning out for you? Do you want to? So Maybe, sometimes, because you don't know. You don't know if they're going to last or not, right? I mean, do you mean with education for two years? I mean, I don't want anyone in education for two years. Right. right. We'll be clear on that. No, no, no. We're talking. Yeah. Two months. You're on the floor. Bye bye. Yes. Yeah. You're. Let's. Let's just move quick. Okay. But that's but that's what your training program is all about. How can we consistently uh, funnel uh, a successful training education so we can help them be successful quicker than snelling? 100%. I mean, and people that are in education and that are constantly learning and something to look forward to, they're, they are more loyal because they are connected in at a different level than just showing up and doing their clients and leaving. So having a strong education program and having two different, we have two different elements for new, new people that are coming in. Um, and that's new people, whether they are experienced or not. And then our senior team, that exactly. are in the salon are advanced people in the salon that are already on the floor they've been through our training program we have a different education program for them where we bring amazing people in twice a year so they don't have to leave to go to education exactly. so we have to we have different we, we we have to speak to what our demographic is so just to recap a couple of things for everybody who's just coming in and chiming in for anybody who has not visited us Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Huddle Time with Ronnie. Thank you for tuning in. This is America's Beauty Show by Cosmetology of Chicago. And each Monday, for us, we join all of us together for a great session with, with great people just like Gila, um, Carrie Davis, uh, to, to kind of share with us what are the things that we need to consider and do, whether it's marketing, branding, education, and of course, we're bringing the element of COVID-19 today. I am in Chicago, right at the headquarters of Cosmetology of Chicago. They are meeting right across the street and planning 2021 to be an amazing year for everybody. So I'm really excited. Reach me for anything you need and have a question uh, at uh, Ronit's Coaching on IG or Facebook. Love to hear from you. Now we have Carrie as a guest today, and we're talking about the importance of how it's important right now to implement back your education. Now we are talking about COVID-19 that is making things a little bit different. So how can we create that if we have split shifts, if we have uh, uh, seven days that we're working, if we're working from behind the mask, what's more important? Is it to bring the money in and try to make it all happen? Or, and if, if that's what it is, how can we balance it, Carrie? Oh, I think, it's, I think that we can't put the importance on one or the other because it's about a business model. And if the minute, you know, I've been talking about this a lot the last few days is that running a business is juggling, right? So you have like six balls in the air, right? One of them is marketing, one of them is staff retention, client retention, education, 
COVID-19 practices and you're juggling and one, one ball is always gonna fall, right? So like the ball call education maybe fell because it was so important to get back to um, operating and bringing money into the business. But it doesn't mean because that ball fell that that ball doesn't need to get thrown back into the mix. So I think that we need to get back to as normal of a practice as we can in these abnormal times. So the staff still need to be in education. In fact, we're closed now because we're in California and we're still bringing our education program back. I mean, so we're bringing that back before we even open the salon. But I talked about core values earlier. One of our core values is education. So it's something that, you know, we are hyper-focused on. Yeah. And I think that's that kind of like leads us to, um, you know, the, the collective leadership right now. Um, in, in what way? I mean, I feel like um, when we're listening to hundreds of salons and speak to hundreds of salon owners, but we also hear at American's Beauty Show, we speak to a lot of licensed beauticians. And we're listening to, to the other side, to the stylist, and how has it been for them, this whole transition? And what I hear a lot is um, fear. Yeah. Fear of coming to work, fear of uh, and confusion. Are we having a daycare? Are we not having a daycare? Yeah. Um, uh, am I going to make enough money? Is it worth it for me to come out? Now, what we hear a lot is, I am so depressed of being at home. I don't want to be at home. I'm, I'm sick of being at home. My kids are all over me. Now I have to teach them again mm -hmm. on Zoom. I got to go through the whole thing. I mean... I miss I miss my people, but again, um, I'm worried. So, how do you lead today in our time um, and and create uh, happiness and safety as a leader? Mm. It's important. Such a big question, right? Mm. Um, because I think you and I talked the other day, and I yeah. think two things that we got, I think we both really agreed on and we got really clear on when we could say like, okay, what are the two things? One is um, creating and being in front of the narrative of your own company. So you have to, and you talk about this and your word around it is leading with authority, right? Like that's kind of, they mean the same thing. When I say you need to get in front of the narrative, that's you as a, as a leader getting in front of what is the story of your company and what's the story for your staff? What can they look forward to? How can we ease their mind? What are the stats? Bringing them the news, breaking it down at a level where they can eat it in bite-sized pieces instead of feeling this giant overwhelm. Um, so how do we do that? And at the same time, how do we practice that muscle called empathy? Yeah. Right? Because empathy is meeting people where they are in leadership, not where we want them to be. Yeah. Right? Like, I want my team to all be like, woohoo, let me get my pom-poms and come to work and get my PPE on. And I can't wait to be there. But not everybody's like that. I have people wanting to go home that have anxiety. I have people that have such anxiety, they don't want to come to work. And so instead of like suck it up, which is my natural way of operating. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, come on, let's do it. Just yeah. suck it up. You'll be fine. Suck it up. You'll be fine. You gotta grind. My poor son. He's like, oh my God, I think my toe broke. You're, is it bleeding? Suck it up. Um, Are you dying? Are you dying? Are you dying? I don't see that you're dying. You're still talking to me. Which well, means no, no, this, is this is a Jewish mother. Are you dying? Is that what it is? You're dying, you're fine. Get it. You're fine. Um, so, but that's kind of how I lead also. I, I'm kind of upbeat and fun. We're going to be fine. You're fine. But it's different right now. And right now, I'm really trying to um, use that muscle and engage that muscle. You know, when you first start working out, you're like, I didn't even know I had a muscle there. That hurts. I'm like that with empathy. Yeah. And so my focus right now is to develop that thing called, let me meet you where you are instead of where I want you to be, because I can't get you to where I want you to be until I can truly understand where you are yeah. to help you. Yeah. And 
and, and it's not on my agenda because I know if I can create or help in some way for my team to feel happy and that they feel like they're taken care of, I'm going to have a better team. Right. And, and even if it means, even if it means, which it has been, we're not open now, but we were open for our six weeks and it was just like, oh my God, I didn't know which way, right? Everyone committed to 40 hours and everybody was like, we're going to make these nine weeks up that we've been closed. And then day by day, the stress would get to them. And they're like, I can't work 40 hours. And yeah. I need to only work 30 hours. And so I started getting like, well, what do you mean? Yeah. Until I started thinking to myself, we, I have to be with them where they are. And even if it's 20 hours a week, even though they said 40, I have to be okay with that yes. because they're going to be happy and producing in those 20 and taking care of themselves. So it's different right now. And I say yes way more than I say no yeah. right now. And I love, I love that you bring in that you have to meet in the middle. I, I had a conversation with our mutual friend, uh, Bonnie Conti uh, the mm -hmm. other day and we talked of, and I asked her the same questions you know what what are you doing I mean because it's difficult right now and she said the same thing you have to meet in the middle you have to come in you have to listen a lot of listening a lot of listening a lot of listening and even of your clients you know listen to your clients really listen um, we all hurting we all have a lot of stress right now and and add regular life into it you know somebody yeah. passed away uh breast cancer um you know somebody else is 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 you know just pass i mean in, in even regular life you know you just have you live with your husband in 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 one room one house 24 hours a day that alone can kill you so you yeah. know <laughs> You know, and then you have Hilarious. a couple of that are bleeding to death and you don't want to deal with that. So there's a lot of stress. On there's a home. lot. And not to mention, I was like, when is this going to be over? And, and the funny story, little funny story. I traveled from Seattle yesterday to Chicago and I was telling you about that. And uh, I'm landing and I'm thinking, OK, let me let me let me get my Uber here. And I'm like, what, what the heck is that? I have to be on Uber app for 10 minutes to call an Uber. You have to answer a lot of questions. Now he comes out, he comes and gets me. I have a big luggage and I'm like, can you help me lift it up? And then I'm like, oh no, 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 no. Don't lift it up. I'll Don't touch it. my stuff. Don't, Don't touch my stuff. <laughs> you know? And I'm like, crap. And I'm so prepared. Like, I, you know, I have my, my bag here with all the wipes. I got my thing here. I got my this here. I got my bottle. I got the thing. Everything falls down. It's a whole different ball game right now. So you have to adjust, right? Yeah. What do we do in to be compassionate about that? What are the things that you actually do, Carrie? If you can share with the world around us, your wisdom, your love, your compassion. What are the three things that for any owner that goes through it themselves, they have their own family and everything. What do you recommend to do in order to engage your team, in order to keep them thing, you know, normal, but not so normal? Three things. Uh, well, I think the first thing is to take care of yourself because you can't give away what you don't have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if we're not doing what we need to do mm -hmm. to self care, then I'm not going to be a good boss. Right. So if I can't have empathy for myself um, and go take a walk on the beach, go spend time with friends, whatever lights me up, it gives me space then to be able to meet my team where they are. I think right now, one-on-ones are really, really critical. Um, and, and, and just how are you, right? Is there anything that I can do to support you in where we are right now? So I think just being there and caring, I, don't, I think everyone's so wrapped up what's happening for them that people sometimes forget to be there for another person. I mean, I know that I'm, I could get a random call. You do this, uh, Ronit, with me uh, uh, every probably a couple times a month. And I have a couple other people that just call me to say, I'm just checking in on you. I just want to see how you are. And it's like, 
really? You do? You know, I mean, it's so emotional because that's it. I don't want anything from you. I'm not telling you to increase your retail per client ticket. I'm not telling you to pre-book more. I want to know how you are. What's going on with you and what can I do to, to help you make you feel better? So I think that's the second thing. And I think the third thing, and we talked about this earlier, is who are you as a company and you being in front of the narrative of where we're going and how this is going to get better and how we're going to get through it together, rising Amen. as a leader, rising up and being able to be the person that they look to. I'm Look, one thing leaders have to have in common or you're not a leader is followers. Yeah. So if everybody leaves you, it's because they didn't find something to follow inside what you're saying. Yeah. And so we have to rise up right now and have the strength yeah. that, that people don't have for themselves. And we can only do that by going back to number one, which is taking care of yourself. I love it. Those two things are called, I do want to add a fourth one to it. Please. Um, I, I want to share with everybody because uh, this is this is what I know. I can I can hear everybody saying, "Well, that's all great, but we we need to pay rent. We need to do this. We need to do this. Money, 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 money." And what I want you guys to look at the fact: you need to go look at your numbers. Do you really need to produce so much money? Look at your expenses and look versus what you're bringing in. What can <clears throat> you cut out of your expenses? so you don't compromise on self-care. Do you yeah. really have to be open seven days a week? Do you really have to sell 500 hours? Can you evaluate your hourly versus your income and versus your outcome? Look at your numbers, create a, a financial plan that support self-care and team care and client care. Mm -hmm. Look at those numbers. You know, by doing that, don't you agree, Carrie? Your confidence to lead, not blindly. I do. I think that that is perfect. And I would couple that with adjusting our mindset. Yes. And, and the mindset should almost be, I'm a new business. And what did I do as a new business? But I have the gift of an experienced salon owner yeah. But what I'm looking at is a new business model. And what did we do as a new business? We weren't open seven days a week as a new business. We built to that because we didn't have the sales for that, but yeah. we didn't know any better. So don't compare where you are now with where you were six months ago yeah. or a year ago. I'm not doing comparison. I do for my own, what, what are we operating at? But right now our business, my all three businesses, the mindset is I have three brand new businesses. Mm -hmm. How do I hire for a new business? How yeah. do I um, generate new clients for a new business? How do I train for a new business? Yes. That's how we are operating. So I'm not constantly disappointed. Oh, this is awesome. I couldn't say it better myself. I, I will I will say say that. You know, you guys, it's what Carrie says is super gold. Super gold. Think about that. Think about, you don't have to kill yourself anymore. You killed yourself in the beginning. You have the experience to know that that didn't help you. Create your own hours, build your own days, um, work with your staff on it, create a plan together. It's a collective leadership right now. And, and you can write through it. Yes, take this place, take, take this time as a war. We have an enemy that disguise himself, disguise himself perfectly. So we have to grind, we have to get to the other side, but you can enjoy somewhat this ride. I mean, why not? Yeah. You can do this. Yeah. So, well, Carrie, what can I say? Every time I listen to you, I just want to go climb Mount Everest with, <laughs> with my mask even with on. With your mask, for sure. Now you're heading into um, a propaganda, you're, you're heading into um, a complete um, protest. protest and thank yeah. you for that. I was looking for that word. It just wasn't. I know. Yeah. Now, what are we hoping to get today in that uh, protest? Well, we are in San Diego. We're having our march. We're doing a protest, our, our socially distant march. I'm wearing white today because white is our color for um, peace unity and solidarity because usually hairdressers wear black so we're yeah. all wearing white today um and it, this you know was um 
was founded by a friend of mine that owns a salon, um, you know, downtown San Diego. And she's like, we need to just make some noise. And so we're going to be meeting downtown and walking to the city administrator building. And the biggest thing is, is if, look, if, if you want to close us, fund us. Yeah. And we need to be yeah. funded Absolutely. because I mean, our PPP is gone, right? How do you, I was telling you, you know, earlier, I mean, the hundreds of thousands of dollars a month that aren't coming in with these businesses closing. Um, it's so fund us if you want us closed. And then the secondary thing, which to me is really primary, um, is we need to be recategorized and be taken out of the categories of, you know, um, indoor eateries, bars, theaters. That's not, um, we're not in that group. That's not the category that we should be in. And nobody knew that in the beginning. No one's been through a pandemic, but they know better now. They have data um, and the data proves that that COVID is not transmitted at a salon when you're taking your, when you're exactly. following your protocol. So we want recategorization and we want to be funded for being closed so that our businesses don't, don't close for that, good. That's good. So we're going to work on those two goals, this protest. Carrie, where can we find, I know you put, um, you have a, a series of webinars going on, like you just, I know everybody. I know everybody is is so impressed by Beauty Backbone, but you actually created something really specific right now that everybody could use. Tell me quickly about that so we can um, refer. And everybody, if you want to know more, I'm going to have it on the links uh, after we uh, come back and repost it on America's Beauty Show. So you'll have all the information. But where can they find you? Oh, well, at beautybackbone.com, um, you will see under leadership, it might be under all of, we have our categories or leadership, culture, finance, operations, and education. And you can go under, you know, culture or leadership. And we are doing a three-part webinar series called The New Normal During a Pandemic. And I have some great guest speakers um, there. It's going to, it's starting Monday, the 24th. It's for one hour and three consecutive Mondays. So the 24th, the 31st, and September 7th, they'll be recorded if you can't attend them physically and you'll get a copy of that. So it's $97 for a series of three webinars. Um, and that's what, what I have coming up. I'm super excited about it. I've been prepping for it for the last couple of weeks. And um, so we have that. I have seven steps for salon profit course, which, you know, and we have our education course called train you. So we have a lot of things going on right now. That's awesome. thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thank you for just sharing your wisdom with us. I love you. Um, I, too. I know we're going to win this war. Everybody out there, we're going to win it. Just stay in it. Stay in the game. Reach out. Uh, let's work together. We we all here to share. Uh, I, I, I'm so excited that, um, that we are in here together. So uh, next week, we're going to have London come into this beautiful space, and we're going to learn from her more. And we're every week we're here to support everybody. So uh, if anybody's tuning in um, right now, you will have the recording coming up and uh, you have so much to learn from Carrie. Thank you so much for being here uh, in beautiful Chicago and uh, beautiful San Diego. Talk to you guys later. Bye. Bye.